2 Samuel chapter 11, picking up where we left off last time, verse 13 was where we ended. And when David had called him, this is Uriah, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. So Uriah got drunk. But David's doing it because Bathsheba has become pregnant by David. Uriah is Bathsheba's husband. He's trying to make Uriah go home so it can look like the, the marriage bed has caused his baby. But Uriah is not playing to the tune because he's a soldier. He's an above soldier. And if his uh, comrades, if Joab and the people of Israel are out in the fields in tents, he's not going to go home. And we find him sleeping at the gate of David's palace. He may not be on the battlefield, but he's picking up. All right, I'll be a guard of the king. And at eventide, at even, excuse me, at even he went out to lay on his bed with the servants of the, his Lord, but went not down to his house. Okay, this is it. This is the final straw. And it came to pass in the morning that David probably heard that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. That letter is the first letter, first time that letter shows up in the Bible, that word. And it's interesting. Uh, we probably already know the story, many of us, but if not, I'm going to give it away. It's a death letter. You know, the rule of the Bible is the first time the word is used is usually to, to the cause of what it means throughout the Bible. That is a death letter. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, to now has not the word letter been used. Uriah means, in a, in a way of a form, this different means light and God. Could be Jehovah's light, the light of Jehovah, but right, if you want to write light and God, that'd be pretty. And Uriah is going to get his lights knocked out, turned off. And he wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. That's the first time the hottest shows up. And you would think that word would describe hell. And yet the first time that word shows up is the most challenging, the most ugliest battle. And retire. That's the first time retired shows up. You know, everybody wants to retire and come down to Florida. Oh, I can't wait to retire me so I don't have to work no more. David says retire. All right, go into battle. Find the most hottest place you can go. Put Uriah ahead of the guy. He is even in front of the flag, if they got a flag guy back then. And when Uriah is up there and the battle is the hottest it can get, I want you guys to turn around and leave him. That's an interesting word for retire when you look at how Americans see retire. This is how angry David is at Uriah, and Uriah hasn't done anything. He just wouldn't go home. How's that? He would not go home. Retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Now let's look at how the Holy Spirit records his letter. Let's read it again. Let's look at the commas, which means pause. Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. And retire ye from him. That he may be smitten. And die. Look at David's feelings. He don't want to write that letter. His conscience is playing with him now as he's writing this letter. He doesn't want to do it. But what else is he going to do? In his eyes. He has taken part in the sin of the Old Testament law that says David is to die. He's got to give up the throne to death. Uriah won't listen to me. He won't go home. He won't make it look like it's his child. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where they knew the valiant men were. So Joab gets this letter. 
Uriah is going to Joab carrying a letter that's going to kill him. And he hands it over to Joab. Joab opens it, however it is, unrolls it, looks at it, reads it. Okay, let's see. There's going to be the hardest battle right there. There's going to be the most ferocious men right there. And Joab does not question the king. He gives into the orders that Uriah was carrying, that David wrote. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. This is the enemy. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. More innocent people have died now. How many times have we read where a battle, where Achan, he sinned against God, and there are people who have died because of his sin. And there was another cause where somebody sinned, I forget where it is, in the Bible, and they go out and other people die. And you'd be foolish to think, oh, if I sin privately, no one's going to be affected. That's a lie from hell. And we're not even told how many men here. With, uh... Oh, now I forgot his name there. In the, in, with Joshua and Judges, I mean, in the book of Joshua, Achan, we're told how many people died innocently. Fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also, according to the law. Now let's look at James 1.15. James spells it many, 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 many years later. He spells it out. Scripture with Scripture, James 1.15. This is a wonderful cross-reference. I don't know who gave it to me. I didn't, probably didn't find it myself. <laughs> but James 1.15. Credit to whoever showed me this. That when lust has conceived, <laughs> oh, who's that talking about? It bringeth forth sin, <laughs> adultery for David. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, the wages of sin is death. Now David would not have read this. David and James are two different places. But let's look at something here. Somebody else showed me. I don't know who it is. But when lust, L. When lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, S. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, D. LSD. There's LSD in the Bible, and it's lust, sin, and death. That's what it'll do to you. David had lust of the eye. Oh, look at that woman. She's beautiful. David, turn your head. Go back to war. Bring her to me. Well, first of all, she's someone's daughter. Second of all, she's someone's wife. Bring her to me. And the action happens. She goes home. She radios and gets hold of days, and you know, I'm with I'm with child. My my husband's out in war. <laughs> we got a problem. Uh verse 18. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning look at that word. The war. Why is that there? Because Joab's already killed a man in peace. Abishai, or not Abishai, Abishai was his brother, Abner. Joab has killed Abner in peace. There was no war because Abner killed his Abishai in war. Now the Lord, the Holy Spirit, it says that Joab has sent Uriah into battle, into war. This is not charged to Joab, and it will be charged to David. By saying the war. Now Joab's already a murderer. But do you know else. The problem David has right now. That today. We don't really have that problem with computers. Joab. We don't know. But is it possible that Joab kept that letter in his pocket? Maybe one day. Hey if I get in trouble with David. Maybe I can use this against him. Joab does not know anything about Bathsheba. All he knows is, I want you to send me Uriah to battle. He calls up Uriah. Uriah, the king wants to see you. Go, now. 
Uriah goes. Uriah comes back to Joab. How things go with the king. I got this letter. Opens up. Kill him. Whoa. Folds up the letter and puts it in his pocket. Now, Uriah is dead. Now, I'm, you got to go report to the king. So he charged the messenger saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war. <laughs> I'm innocent now, this time. I have been guilty the other time. On to the king. And if so be that the king's wrath arise. He gets ugly. He gets mean. So evidently David had a temper that Joab's afraid of. And he say unto thee, Wherefore approacheth, that's the first time that word shows up, and the only other place it shows up is 2 Kings 16.12. 2 Kings 16.12. This word only shows up twice. 2 Kings 16.12. Approacheth ye so not unto the city when ye did fight. Alright, so I lost a bunch of men. Why did you go so close to that city? Give an account, Joab. That's what he's saying. Know ye not that they would shoot from the wall? You lost a bunch of men approaching a wall and they were going to shoot arrows? Joab, what is your trouble? That ain't you. Now watch Joab. Who smoked Abimelech, the son of Jerobesheth? That's in Judges 6. You know what? Joab saying right now about David, the Holy Spirit telling you, David would quote scripture. David would said, You made this mistake, and this is what the scripture said. That Jobesheth, which is called Jerobel in Judges, he approached so close to the wall, did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him, it was upon his skull, from the wall that he died in Thebes? Joab, Jebus, Jebusif, Jeroboth, both names are hard to say. That guy got so close to the wall that a woman was able to cast a millstone and break his skull. What's your problem? What'd you do? Why went ye nigh to the wall? Now, 21 is what Joab's telling this messenger. If this is, how, this is what David says. David gets angry and he quotes scripture. Then thou shalt say, then thou, then say thou, excuse me. All right, if he gets in that, this is what you tell him. Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. That's the orders. I may have been, what Joab has done in battle is wrong. It's a wrong battle tactic. And Joab acknowledges what we did was stupid. But King, you ordered it. You don't go walking right up to a city and they're going to shoot arrows at you. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent for him. And this is the messenger now. Now watch the messenger. He doesn't even, he takes Joab's words and he just doesn't shut up. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us. We're outnumbered. And came out unto us into the field. And we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. Now come back over here to verse 16. At the end of verse it says, Unto a place where he knew the valiant men were. That would be the gate. The most protective part of the city would be that gate. If the enemy gets through that gate, you're in trouble. So we're going to put the most fiercest, we're going to put the most elite men at that gate. See, it's not just a wall. That got Joab would get Joab in trouble. They go upon walls all the time. But you don't go marching right up to a gate. That gate is heavily defended. And Joab said at that gate where we will not originally go. We're going to go. We're going to put Uriah up against it. And then we're going to turn around and leave him. And during that some people died besides Uriah. And the shooters, that's the only time that word shows up in the Bible. So, you gun activists. The shooters of the Bible killed the servants of David and Uriah. Woohoo! Guns don't kill. Well, I know they didn't have guns, but shooters. The shooters shot from off the wall upon thy servants. And it's called widow makers. 
and some of the king's servants be dead. The innocent. And watch. I'm not even going to give you time to quote scripture to me, Joab said. Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. <laughs> that messenger is smart. He says, I'll put it all in one phrase and I'm not going to give David time to get angry. And notice how he did it the exact order that Joab told him to do. And he did exactly what Joab told him to do. Now, Joab would say, okay, we we, we lost against this war, this this battle. And David would get upset, and then you tell him, you know, Uriah's dead, but he went right into Uriah's dead and the thing. And the discussion. So whoever this messenger is, he's wise. He's obedient. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devours, that's the first time that word shows up, one as well as another, but God's protected you, David, hasn't he? Hasn't he protected you from Saul? Make thy battle more strong against the city. And overthrow it, encourage thou him, Joab. What a hypocrisy. Now this is where David is not a type of Jesus Christ. Oh well, he's dead. Make it stronger. You know. Help Joab, strengthen him, and just go at it even stronger. And get the city take it. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for him. Did she ever find out about that letter? Did she ever find out who was the cause of his death? I ever wonder. From what the stories I read, I doubt it. Where is that letter? Did Joab get rid of it? Did he keep it? And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible word. That's almost like Jesus, that woman come, oh, help my daughter. Oh, even the dogs. He fetched her to his house. Wait a minute. He fetched her. Let's go back to early. Oh, where's that? Place? I forgot. Um, in verse 4, David sent messengers. Ooh. David sent messengers. Joab sent a messenger. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Read what you sow. And took her. So, kind of sent a message. He sends an invitation. David wants you. Come. Now he fetch her to his house. And she became his wife. <laughs> you got enough wives, David. <laughs> and she bared him a son. <laughs> that would be Solomon. The first son died. Oh, that's right. Yep, they, yep, the first son did die. Later she produced the Solomon. Bear him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's the first time and the last time the Lord shows up in that chapter. That chapter. Finally the Lord came in and the God's like, huh? And God knew exactly what happened. Now Joab didn't know why David was mad at Uriah. Bathsheba, I would safely assume, she did not know who caused uh, her husband to die. Now maybe you know Joab went to this hardest battle she heard about. Maybe she's mad at Joab. Again, why didn't you go to that battle not knowing David? But all the Lord was there the whole time. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. And we're not done with David. God is not done with David. But we're also going to see the mercy of God to David. And we're in the Old Testament law. 